Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords. Just leaving my my pipe there for the moment while I talk. And uh, today I was going to, first of all, I was going to talk about the Invisible College and start giving you guys an insight into what's in it. Rather than doing one gigantic, I don't know, it would have to be like a four-hour review, I'm going to do a bunch of little um, videos about it and different parts of it so you can know what, what the deal is in it. But... Um, first of all, I, I wanted to address, people might have heard that there was, a, I think it was comicbook.com or something like that, um, that Jeremy Crawford seems to mistakenly believe that he's a writer for Marvel Comics or something, and uh, he has declared that um, everything that, that, is, that was done by D&D before 2014 is, I quote, not canon, okay? Uh, <laughs> all right, Jeremy, look, I'm sorry. You don't get to decide what's canon, right? That's the wonderful thing. I mean, especially you, obviously, right? Because you're really fundamentally a nobody. But, um, you know, nobody gets to decide what's canon. I mean, Gary Gygax wouldn't get to decide. I mean, he was the closest person that could have gotten to someday decide um, what was or wasn't canon. You can decide what is or is not an official product of Wizards of the Coast, but you don't get to decide what's canon because the thing about D&D, &D, the thing that frustrates you and your friends so much about D&D &D is that you don't get to control it, right? If, if you have comic books or a show like Star Wars or Doctor Who, then the, then the people that own the rights to it also get to control what is supposedly the, the, the uh, appearance of that world, right? The comic book world, right? So if you replace, I know, Iron Man with a, with a black teenager or, you know, Doctor Who is now about social justice, well, there's not much that the viewer of Doctor Who or that the reader of Iron Man can do except stop viewing or buying the product, which they have done in droves, right? Um, but RPGs are different. And the reason why we keep beating the, the, the woke mobs uh, back in the RPG field more effectively than in, in any, any other area except maybe video games. They've, done a, you know, they've also done a very good job there um, for a similar reason, which is, uh, but even in, in RPGs, it's even closer because in video games, you still have to play the video game if you want, you know, that, that you want to play, right? You still don't get to control the world of that video game. But you, in this case, you, Wizards of the Coast, you, Jeremy Crawford, don't get to control what's in anyone's game, right? So you don't get to define a canon, right? There's no such thing as a D&D &D canon. We don't, we don't really care what you think. So, you know, that, that's kind of cute that you think that you do, that anyone will, that anyone's going to take that seriously, but it's just not going to happen. And I guess that's pretty much everything I had to say about that. So onwards to the Invisible College. So this is the Invisible College Authentic Magic OSR role-playing. And uh, it was done by Welliverd Press. And uh, today I'm going to talk about basically the premise of the Invisible College, especially given the recent thing about like Strixhaven and all that. Some people think the Invisible College is about like a Harry Potter-style college. It is not. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term... The Invisible College was the name of a secret movement that happened in real life in the mid 1600s in in England and you know the the well, in the 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 Anglosphere and also some of the German speaking world. And it was a direct descendant of the Rosicrucians which happened about one generation earlier and it was a direct ancestor of the Freemasons which happened about one generation later. So the Invisible College was a movement of, of free thinkers, of religious universalists, and people very interested in both the hard sciences, as they were at the time, and the hermetic mysteries. And uh, it's, it's a secret order that operates in, not in, a, in the form of a, um, a place with a building and a secret meeting, but in the form of, a, of modes of recognition of each other that uh, people that are of the Invisible College can, can know each other by, um, 
by their 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 common causes and qualities in the same way i mean let, let, you know to demystify it it's like well you know punk rock right <laughs> you know if another guy's into punk or not based on things he says or how he looks or how he dresses or whatever right and it was the same way back in the 1630s with the invisible college right and they would they would publish in the same kind of literary magazines and uh, hang out in different societies that had stuff in common related to you know vitruvius or then stone masonry <laughs> and uh, you saw where that one went and but also you know um study groups that that eventually became the royal society and all that sort of stuff so um this is not hogwarts right it's not that call that type of college it's an invisible college and it's it's got adults in it it's not too well i mean in theory i guess a member Somebody in the Invisible College could be a teenager, but but it's generally adults, and they're uh, engaged in a hidden um, war, an occult war against other factions of magicians for control of the destiny of humanity. So, here's some an example of some stunning full color artwork. This is the Amazon edition that we're looking at, by the way. Um, the real magical world in in one of the the assumptions of the game your characters are members of this group the invisible college and you are part of a hall together one one kind of cell within this order the secret order that it works to try to fight for the spiritual liberation of humanity against the the forces of darkness that would plunge humanity into eternal oppression or extinguish humanity or bring it into a new dark age or um, or transform it into some kind of unhuman terror. Um, so th this is a real occult RPG, it's, which does not mean you're going to learn how to do any real magic in the game. It's not, it's not, there, there's no, this is not, unlike what Job is cooking up, this is not a book of how to do real magic. It is our book that will tell you a lot about, without giving you any ability to do real magic, it'll tell you a lot about what real magic in the modern sense looks like and what what the people who practice it see it as because it, that's what it means by real magical world um the the game is set up so that um we assume first of all that you know unlike most unlike most occult modern rpgs um you don't have like a system of people throwing around fireballs and stuff like that that's not the type of magic you're going to find here because this is not D&D type magic or anime style magic or Ma Mage the Ascension style magic. This is magic that looks like what real hermetic magic would look like if it were real, which you may choose to believe is not, right? Um, and, and so it's based in the, the real occult world. And in the real occult world, 90% of all occultism is crap, right? So the first premise is that, that the people, the, most of the, the writings, the books, the stuff that you can find out there, it's all out there, right? Everything, that's another thing. You can't, this isn't Call of Cthulhu. We have to go find some lost freaking text somewhere in some, you know, um, archaeological dig or some ancient ruin. Everything you need to do real magic is now available for download off the internet, usually for free. And if not, you can order a book on Amazon, right? Like this is, this is updating that whole genre to what, how it actually is in the modern world where, where you don't have to do any kind of, like the only research you have to do is Google research, right? You have to know how to search for the, for the right places where you can find the right stuff. But other than that, it's not difficult to get, right? The difficult thing is telling apart what stuff is just total garbage and what stuff is actually useful, okay? Um, so here we get to the, the the interesting part, which is the secret war, right? The There are various factions that have been fighting for some time and some factions have, you know, risen and fallen um, to determine the path of human spiritual evolution. So, you know, humans develop from being just practically animals to being, you know, primitive tribesmen controlled by spirits and superstitions to becoming, you know, city dwelling cultures that worship statues of gods and goddesses um, to more sophisticated civilizations, philosophies of universal deities, um, 
that established concepts of moral law and justice, and um, to, then to the age of reason and enlightenment, and the development of individual human rights and liberal values, and on to the present world of technological and scientific wonders. And at each stage, there have also been, you know, there have been good sides to it and bad sides. There have been drawbacks. There have been difficulties. And um, there have been people trying to direct in the background where humanity goes. Does it move forward or back? Does it move forward towards more freedom or does it move forwards towards a state of oppression? And um, in all of that, since the 1600s, the Invisible College, the most powerful secret order uh, – on the side of humanity's spiritual evolution, has been fighting to try to, uh, uh, to guide humanity towards a, a spiritual um, evolution of uh, a freedom, basically. So the, uh, the, the, the Invisible College, the group that by default the player characters will normally be in in a normal campaign... It's a secret society that is based on cell structures, so like, like, like a spy ring, right? So the PCs are going to be part of one cell that are going to be um, they're going to be working with each other and probably some NPCs, and they're going to be agents, and they might have contacts with some of these other halls, some of these other cells of the Invisible College, and um, they're. They're fighting against other groups, some of whom have structures similar and some different from the Invisible College. Enemies include the Black Lodge, which are basically, um, this is what people will usually think of when they imagine the Illuminati, right? Uh, the guys that want to control humanity. They want to, they want to um, repress most of humanity and, and only uh, have a certain elite be the magical and, you know, political overlords of humankind. So they've been infiltrating all kinds of conventional orders and organizations for ages to try to, to gain control. Then you have the Gormigans. Um, these, are, these are all real groups that existed more or less, right? <laughs> Especially the Gormigans were a real group from the 1700s. Um, the Gormigans are essentially a group of anti-Illuminism proponents. They, they, they were originally... Um, fundamentalist Catholics that fought against the Invisible College, that sought to persecute the Invisible College, and that wanted to turn back all of liberalism, right? Keep in mind that for the Catholic Church, official doctrine-wise, democracy was considered a really bad idea until right around 1900, you know? <laughs> so it's like... Uh, yeah, there, were, there was a lot of doubt between 1900 and 1950, let's say, like 46, let's say 46. After that, the church started changing its tune. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, uh, um, the Gormigans want to uh, stop the Age of Enlightenment. They want to stop the idea of individ the rights of the individual and spiritual freedom. And they want to return, um, the, well, the original Gormigans want to return to a world that was dominated by a single... Um, by a single law-giving religious hierarchy, right? Which they, originally was for them the Catholic Church. But the people that are in charge of the Gormigans, they're not stupid people. They're not superstitious. They're, they're people that understand the value of control. Some of them are magicians and they want to, um, they want, they want to dominate society through religious fundamentalism. In fact, they've had several kind of schisms over the years and one of the big ones was what they when when you had a group called the rationalist gormigans that decided that that in the modern world a single religious ideology a single religious hierarchy a church or whatever wouldn't be able to control society and have decided that instead it is much better for the state to do it in the form of kind of state sponsored marxism or something like that right so they the gormigans sometimes fight amongst themselves because of who they want, what, what plan, what their plan is. But they all agree that what they want is individualism crushed and collectivism promoted with a religious or pseudo-religious elite in power, right? They have the Order of Thule. Well, you can guess what these guys are. They're the literal Order of Thule from the, you know, the, the, the war years, <laughs> the, uh, the people that, that were responsible for the rise of the um, the, the not so nice people in Germany, right? 
And, uh, of course, they were a really big enemy of the Invisible College in the 1930s and 40s. They were now, they were afterwards destroyed and, um, but, but not completely. And there's still like weirdos in, in Antarctic bases and volcanoes and stuff like that, that are plotting that somehow they will return to another glorious Reich. Okay. And then you have the cult of Typhon. The cult of Typhon are, uh, again, these are all real groups. <laughs> the cult of Typhon, uh, also known as Typhonians, are a, a group of guys that are basically um, very deep into using magic to um, to surrender their own humanity into the service of demonic forces would be, or but, but they would they wouldn't really call them demonic. They they would call them preternatural forces because they basically think that that the dark side of the tree of life and the the klipoth the 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 night beings that were never meant to exist. Um, have been given a bad rap and uh, these guys want to worship them and uh, help them come and make their mark on earth. So this is, this is the closest you get to like Lovecraftian stuff with the Typhonians, except it's not Lovecraft. This is based on actual stuff that you will find in Jewish mysticism, right? The Klipoth of the Kabbalah, the, uh, the shells, the, 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 the never were things, um, the part of creation that, that was never meant to exist. And these guys are basically worshipping it. Next, we have the Quran Zone Club, one of my favorite groups, also a real group. These are all groups that really existed at some point or another. Um, the Quran Zone Club are basically self-serving mercenaries who want to use the power of magic to get rich, get all the blow and hookers they can, get power, have the best possible time, and they just don't care about anybody else but themselves. Um, they're absolutely ruthless and amoral. Um, they're complete hedonists. Uh, but, uh, you know, are they, are they really evil? Well, yeah, you, they're, they're not evil like the Order of Fuel is evil or like the Cult of Typhon, the one enslaved humanity to Klipoth, right? Uh, but these are guys that are, you know, gonna use their magic for, you know, uh, human trafficking and drug dealing and, uh, taking over small countries and all that sort of stuff. So they're still bad guys, right? They're kind of the, they were started by a guy who broke away from the Invisible College. And then you have the Nemites. Again, also a real group, a group of magicians that believe that the only way we're going to overcome the problems of mankind is by our spiritual evolution, just like the Invisible College believes, except in their case, they think that our spiritual evolution should be to transform ourselves into a race of insect creatures, and they're doing everything they possibly can to make that happen, right? So you can see how those are going to be an interesting enemy to, to throw on your characters in, in some moment in the campaign, you know, where they're maybe expecting like black guys in suits with guns or, uh, you know, uh, evil German magicians or something like that. And suddenly you have the bug people that show up, you know, it's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then finally here, you got the solipsists who are um, people who have usually, who are usually very advanced magicians, but that have fallen into the trap of believing that they are gods. Uh, and that they they have absolute control over reality, and that reality bends at their will. The problem is when you when you fall in, into that, if you are a powerful magician, you are pretty capable of bending a lot of reality uh, to your will, and so you can end up doing a tremendous amount of harm. Um, so I think we'll leave that for today because we're getting close to twenty minutes here. Next time that I do one of these, I don't know if I'll, I'm not going to necessarily do them all in a row, right? Because it depends on what other news is going on. I still have a couple of reviews to make. But uh, in the next time, I'm going to talk about the spy agencies that that are part of the occult war and how you can also run a, a campaign if you wanted to, where your player characters were instead agents of one of the national governments that has an occult agency um, trying to, to protect their country from these weirdos, all these weirdos that are involved in the occult war. Um, and I might even get into, in, if I have enough time in the next video, the, um, the other groups. Because as you, as you saw, this, is, this was kind of the, uh, a little bit Eurocentric, right? All the groups that I mentioned basically came out of the Western world. But of course, there are um, uh, 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 all kinds of uh, genuine occult teachings all over the world because it's a universal philosophy. And also groups that have sprung up all over the world for good and bad. Uh, and you're going to see some of those as well. Um, anyways, uh, if you have any questions so far, feel free to post them on the, on the video. 
and I'll try to answer them if you have suggestions for other things you want to know about the Invisible College or what have you. And if you like this video, please feel free to share it. Um, <laughs> share it anywhere that Jeremy Crawford's people might, <laughs> might see it. That would be fun. I, I don't know if he's... He's not, I, I have no idea if he watches this channel. I know that Mike used to, Mike Merles used to watch, read, read my blog all the time. Uh, maybe he watches the channel too. Hi, Mike. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's everything for today. If you like the video, please share it. Please subscribe and check out my products, be it The Invisible College or any of my other books, you know, uh, Lion and Dragon, Dark Albion, Cults of Chaos, Arrows of Ender. It's too many to name now. <laughs> I've got so many books. I got, you know, I've got literally, if you count RPG Pundit Presents, which I have 105 issues of, I've got like 120 RPG products to my name. So uh, be sure to check all of those out. The links are in the description below. You could get stuff of mine all the way from, I don't know, like this is, I think, 35 bucks for 430 pages. Um, 35 or 45 bucks, I forget. But one there, there's an addition of 35. I think 35 is the the color from drive through But anyways, you can get this for that range all the way down to like, I've got products in the RPG Pundit Presents, which are my PDF series of short works that are as cheap as 99 cents. So if you want to support me, the best way to do it is to, to get my books, to get my products, to check them out and buy them and play them and share them, tell people about them. That's, that's the best way to support me. If you really don't want to do that, if you're, if, but you don't want to support me, you're just too lazy or you're just not interested in RPGs or what have you, I do have a Patreon account. You can support me on Patreon. Um, it's funny because I've got, there's this, this person that is um, on, on Twitter doing this campaign of saying, I'm going to beat Patreon. At, uh, I'm going to beat the pundit at, at, at his Patreon account to prove that he's not important, right? And I, it's literally like the least thing I care about. Right? Like, I mean, I'm very glad, very grateful to everybody who supports me on Patreon. But I only get like, you know, it, I think it's about 50 bucks in Patreon money, if that, right? Um, because people instead will buy all my products and, and that's where I'm getting all my money. So I mean, this person thinks like they, they, they think that if they get more Patreon backers than I do, then that'll mean that they're imp more important than me. <laughs> and, and like, this is some person that does like furry story gaming RPGs or something like that. But, uh, they think that they're going to be able to, to be more relevant than me if they beat me at the thing that I care almost nothing about because, it's what less people than than uh, you know support me with than than almost anything else that I that I get supported with, right? So it's uh, it's very funny. But anyways, if you want to if you want to drive a certain furry story gamey Craig story gamer crazy, support me on uh, on Patreon. And, uh, and but if not, just buy my books. You know, and uh, most importantly, share the video everywhere. We'll talk to you guys soon. Currently smoking. This is, uh, uh, oh, eh, what is it? <laughs> this is a Ashton. That's right, an Ashton Rhodesian. Very rare pipe nowadays. Um, an Ashton Old Church Rhodesian. Plus our Gento Natural.